thread on something that would be helpful over the summer for you. It's nothing that is um, too intensive, but kind of little things that you can do just within your own structure, within your house, um, the activities that you plan. It would certainly benefit a lot of our boys when they're transitioning back into the year for next year. Um, so just an overview. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about um, FLP. Um, and then I really wanted to tie everything into executive functioning. The reason being is because I would say any teenage boy, regardless of academic struggles or learning differences, struggle with executive functioning, as do most adults in some way, shape, or form. Um, but that tends to be the, the common denominator with all of our students. And a large part of that is because they are teenage boys. <laughs> and they need more modeling and they need more instruction on how to be successful in those areas. So we'll talk a little bit about executive functioning, um, what you can do to strengthen executive functioning for your son, and then some activity ideas for summer and moving into a good transition for the school year. <coughs> um, this is Overview of the Foundation's Learning Program. It's our learning support program on campus. And what I love about our program here is that we really have the freedom to individualize 100% for the boys that we have. Um, I don't want to sit up here and say that we have a set curriculum because we don't. <laughs> um, we have kind of the keystone topics that we like to touch upon that we feel are very important for academic success. But we also really do change the class block to block for each individual student. These are some of the most common things that we do within FLP. Um, so improving self-advocacy is a big one, really working with our young men to ask for help when they need it, to know when those times are coming. Um, executive function coaching, academic coaching to go along with their core, temp, core content areas, reading intervention. Um, we've started to do a lot with mindfulness, if anybody's familiar with that. Um, it's just strategies that you can incorporate during the day, like deep breathing that really helps students to recenter and refocus. Um, Research-based strategies, a flexible curriculum, study skills, test taking, um, enrichment and support. So anything we do in FLP can kind of hit one of those areas, but tends to really be individualized. Um, just in formal terms, executive functioning is really the conductor of all cognitive skills. And my students always laugh at me because executive functioning is one of the things we work on the most. And sometimes they'll say, well, Mrs. Farrell, sometimes your memory is awful. <laughs> You know, or Mrs. Harrell, your desk doesn't look very organized today. So I always tell them that the strategies I'm teaching them are not only beneficial for them, but for me as well, because nobody is perfect all of the time. And um, these are all areas that everybody can continue to improve upon. But the biggest ones that we really hit are task initiation. A lot of our young men struggle with just getting started. It's not that they're not capable. It's not that it's too daunting of a task for them. It's just getting them started and in that zone. Um, working memory, that's my biggest trouble currently. <laughs> um, I'm always leaving something in another room, but a lot of our boys do this too. They'll leave for the day in the morning and they'll forget three of their books that they need and have to go back. Um, the flexibility. The flexibility we see the most with if something in their schedule changes, if something in their structure changes, a lot of our young men struggle with that. And so it's hard to then get them to that task initiation point if they're struggling with the flexibility. Planning, time management, and then emotional control can um, play into all of this. Okay. So some ideas that you can do over the summer to work on task initiation are just really kind of easy things that you can incorporate into the structure of your home. Um, at the beginning of the summer, set goals for them and then have check-ins. And that can take so many different shapes. It could be um, a student wanting to save for a hoverboard. And I hope not, because I hate those things. <laughs> but, um, or, or for something that they want. And then saying, well, okay, if you want to save for this, you're going to get an allowance every week, but you have to do these three things. You know, so really having those goals set with them, but then having check-ins with them. You know, how are you doing with that? How can I help you? Where are we at in our goal? So that could take any you know, shape or form of what that looks like for your family. Um, earning a certain amount of money and saving for something. Work on a book that everyone reads. I know it would be hard to get teenage boys to sit down and read with you. But that being said, maybe um, encouraging them 
to find a book that they like, and then you read it too. Whether it be, you know, a sci and, and Ben's an avid reader, you know, so finding um, a science fiction book or a young adult literature book, but then maybe you skim through it as well too, and you can have those conversations settled around that book. Um, chores around the house, this is a big one for me. Um, I really encourage you to have your boys do chores around the house because that's going to help them not only with the time management and the task initiation, but also when they come back to school. Because on campus, they are expected to take a role on campus. We have um, campus service and hall duties. And you can often kind of tell the difference between the boys that are used to having their responsibilities at home and, and the ones that are not because it's like pulling their hair to, to get them into the you know, cafeteria to clear plates. And that just teaches them so much about that task initiation and getting started on something for the betterment of the community or the household. Um, have them help you with technology. Um, this is a great way for them to be learning something and not realize it. We'd be helping you in the same way. So if there's a certain app that you could use, whether it be an organizational app, um, even a game, really, on your phone, but say, hey, you know, I really don't understand this. Can you walk me through how this works? And then let them model that for you, because that's really going to help them once again just with that task initiation, getting started on something, and they're not going to realize that they're doing it, right? But for them, you know, the technology, they're wonderful with it. It's amazing the things they can do, so utilize that. Um, time tasks with a reward. If they have chores, or for example, you know, they are supposed to be cleaning their room, say, you know what, I'm going to give you 45 minutes to clean your room, and then let's go out for ice cream. You know, but we're going to leave it. 8 o'clock for ice cream because they close at 8.30. You know, give them that time task so that it's not, oh, well, I'm going to go into my room and get on my computer or I'm going to go into my room and, you know, start doing this instead. Just very informally, without the pressure, just give them those time structured tasks. Okay. Uh, flexibility is a big thing that helps them when they come back into campus because Coming from being at home and having really you know free summer to do fun things and not have to do homework, that tends to be a struggle the first month of school for most of our boys. So working on flexibility um, in your house, within your own life, plan diverse activities for them. Um, encourage them to do community service. Do some different things as a family. Um, try not to stick to the same everyday routine. Um, to put it in terms of Groundhog's Day. You know, try to get them out of that same structure. Um, another simple thing you can do is if you have a family game night, change the rules to a board game. Um, I've done this in my class to different levels of success and reactions. You know, if I put um, Scrabble out on the table and I say, we're going to play Scrabble now, but you can only do words that are five letters. <laughs> or they have to be at least six letters. Some kids react very well to this, and other kids are like, forget it, I'm not playing, you're changing the rules, Mrs. Farrell, you can't do that. And you can tell, but it's really because they're just stuck in that you know, structure of what they're used to. So that's kind of a fun way to say, you know, it's okay for things to change, it's okay for us to get used to different things, um, but it's obviously not something that should upset them too greatly. Um, and then you can make that kind of a routine. So if you have game night every Thursday, well, you know what, next week is your turn to pick the game and you get to change the rules. So then kind of model with yourself. Um, cell phone and technology free zones, going along with their wonderful aptitude for technology, also comes to, you know, you tend to have that um, technology always around. So encourage technology free zones in your house. If you're sitting down for meals, everybody's gonna put the cell phone in a box on the table before you sit down. That's going to help them a lot when they come to school, when they come into the classroom and they know right off the bat this technology is not going to leave my book bag unless the teacher says, get your cell phone out for this purpose. Um, so just working with them with that at home, and that doesn't tend to be a problem for all of our boys, but it certainly is, I think, for teenagers in general an issue. Um, and then preview any changes. So before you get to the last two weeks of summer, start having those conversations. You know, this is what your schedule has been all summer. You are, you know, working this job. This is the structure you're used to. Let's talk about how that's going to change in a couple weeks. 
have that conversation with them ahead of time so they don't go just from their summer schedule to then, okay, you're back at Grand River, you're at breakfast at 7.30, you're not sleeping till 11, all of that. Okay. Um, planning and time management is another thing that you can do very easily at home with small little <coughs> implementation of things. Um, model how to use a planner or schedule. So if you are somebody that uses a day planner, show them. You know, have them see you using that. that you know, I have a lot going on, I work and I have this and we have these family commitments after school. Here's how I keep track of all of that. Share that with them. Um, post on your refrigerator, block out times for activities. This is one that we use in my classroom a lot. Is I probably spend the Monday of each week with every class probably at least 20 minutes doing this. We have a master calendar. We go through every student's schedule. We go through our school schedule just so that they can kind of say, this is what my week looks like. Um, include everyone's activities and chores within that. Give them ownership on family trips. Um, this is one of the easiest ways that you can really incorporate that planning and time management so that they can have a little bit of ownership. If you're going to go on a trip, let them see kind of the budgeting aspect of it. Say, you know, I budgeted $500 for us for this weekend to do fun things. Um, what are some of the things you would like to do? And why don't you, at this point, pull out your cell phone, research it, and tell me a little bit what that would cost. So have them take ownership in that. Let them have a role in it. Um, and it could be even as little as saying, hey, this day on vacation, we're going to go to a restaurant. I want it to be in the middle of advertising on family trips. It could be just a weekend activity, too. Encourage them to make lists. Um, this is probably another one of the main things I do within my classroom with a lot of my boys that they're very hesitant to at first, but then once they start doing it, they actually come to me and they'll say, Mrs. Farrell, can we make my list for the week? Which, you know, makes like the teacher and me like do dances and cartwheels and because <laughs> they are so resistant to it. Um, one that I have had a lot of success with, success with is Wonderlist. And that is a free app. You can get it on any phone. Um, all it is is just a list-taking app. You type in what you want, and then as you check them off, they disappear and they make a funny little sound. But you can use it on your phone. I pull mine up on the um, computer. I usually share my list with them so that they can see here's what my week um, looks like. So if you have a student that would really rather have that in technology, Wonderlist is um, fantastic. I couldn't say enough about it. Um, Google Docs and a Google Calendar. There's nothing wrong with, as a family, having a Google Calendar and then sharing it with each other so that everybody has access. And so that they start to learn, well, if I have um, a commitment with this friend on Thursday, I better put it into the calendar so mom knows. You know, encourage them to do that because we do use Google Docs a lot at our school and that's been one of the biggest um, assets, I think, is the capability to share between teachers and students. And then once again, back to the earnings, brainstorm summer strategies for extra earnings. So if they want to um, save some money this summer, what are some things you could do? If you go and you mow the neighbor's lawn, you know, twice a month, that's $40 right there. So sit down with them and kind of brainstorm ideas so that they can implement them on their own. And then just some general academic touchstones during the summer to kind of help to Keep them on track so that they're not checking out completely. Um, volunteer is a huge, huge, huge one. Um, I think a lot of students do this already, but I find that with our boys, that tends to be what brings out the best in them, is the volunteering. And once again, that's something that they might be resistant to at first, but we have a lot of young men here that when they first come, they don't volunteer for anything on their own, but once they get that introduction to it, then they become avid volunteers, and they're asking every week to do something. Um, but going along with that, let them research the cause before you go. So I have a young man this year that loves animals, and he's very <laughs> resistant to doing community service, but his mom actually got him involved with the local animal shelter, and he came back after a break and was showing me pictures of a gala they were at, and he was holding all the kittens, and he really took ownership because it was something he was particularly interested in. Um, start an SAT or ACT online prep course, depending on, well actually you can do that as early as you wanted. Um, 
I'd say ninth or 10th grade would be perfect for that. There's a lot of free ones that you can find online. Um, just encourage them to kind of start reviewing that early. Has anybody ever heard of Coursera? Well, I know I've talked to you about it. Um, I love Coursera. Coursera is a website that has, it hosts free courses from colleges all over the United States and the world in different subjects. And you can sign up for, I think it goes from two weeks to like eight week courses. Some of them cost money if you want to actually have, not a diploma, but a certificate of completion come back to you. But if you have a student that's really interested in a particular topic, or say they want to do something like coding, or there's an enrichment area that maybe you know they just don't have anything at the local community college. It's no pressure, you can sign up, it's free, and they are actual online courses from places like Harvard, John Hopkins, community colleges. I've taken a few myself just on different teaching techniques in the summer. Um, my husband is a physician and he uses it to just kind of go on and review anatomy and review different things um, that he's studying at that particular moment. Um, so he was actually the one that introduced it to me. And it's been a great enrichment tool within my class that I've had students that have wanted to kind of take science a step further or take a history subject a step further. Um, going along with the family reading, start a family reading list of maybe some books you'd like to read over the summer. And depending on the student, it is kind of hard to get them on that train if they're not an avid reader on their own. But just, just start it. You know, here's some five books I'd like to read. Maybe we can, you know, read them together, discuss it. And then start a family blog. If you have a student that is very good with technology or web design, they have a lot of the free applications you can use now that um, you could blog about your summer. And you could say, hey, we're going on this fun trip. I'm going to blog. And it doesn't have to be open to the public. It could be just for your family. Um, but it's a great way to really get that technology so that they're more engaged in what they're doing, but they're also still hitting those academic structure skills. Um, discuss current events around the dinner table. This could be formal. This could be informal. This could be you saying, um, hey, I saw in the news today that this is going on. What do you think about that? but really encouraging that back and forth dialogue and teaching them you know, how to discuss appropriately and how to listen to other people and how to also engage with what they're saying and give their own feedback. Books on tape, this is an easy way you can sneak something in if you're gonna go on a road trip. Um, I, I love books on tape. If I'm driving anywhere, I have a book on tape in my car. You could then hit that family reading list, have it playing, and they might say they're not listening, but they probably are getting, you know, some of that at least, so that can then lend itself to discussions. My mom did this to me and my um, sister all the time when we were younger and going to the beach, and she'd put these tapes on, I'm like, I'm not listening to that. But, you know, you start to get engaged in it, and before you know it, you're like, no, 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 we can't stop driving. <laughs> um, and then start the college connections early. So it doesn't matter if your student is a ninth grader, 10th grader, 11th grader, give them some of that time over the summer to just look at local schools. They might not even be interested in going to those particular schools, but walk them around campus, let them see what it's like, have them talk to another student, um, start talking to them about what they're interested in, so that when you get to that college preparation time, you kind of have at least an idea of what they're feeling. They have a little bit of exposure. Um, and like I said, this could be formal as far as actually planning visits at the school, or it could just be, you know, we're coming back from vacation, this college is on the way, let's just, just look around campus, see what it looks like. Okay. Um, and then making a smooth transition into our school year at GRA, these are the two biggest suggestions that I have. Um, and I also got some feedback from our other teachers, and they agreed that these are probably the two biggest. The first one being attempt a normal schedule for them. And once again, that's hard in the summer because you want to sleep in a little bit. They want to stay up a little bit later. And that's okay, but that last month, um, here we start at the end of August, so probably like August 15th, start moving them towards that more structured schedule. You know, if it's 1030, um, 11 o'clock, hey, put your cell phone away, we're all gonna go to bed, um, and then wake them up a little bit earlier. And that's not to say you have to wake them up at 6.45 or seven o'clock, 
But even making that transition to waking them up at 8.39, um, it's really hard for a lot of our boys because they're teenage boys. Like, they want to stay up all night and they want to sleep in. And it, it is hard. I mean, it's hard for anybody. I mean, I have a hard time after we have a break where I sleep till 8.30 and I'm like, this is wonderful. <laughs> and then, you know, you go back to, you know, the 5.45 or the 6 o'clock and it's a struggle. So if you can start just working them up towards that in small increments, that will help them tremendously that first week of school so that they can get on a strong start. Um, and then discuss beginning of the year organization with them. Um, if they're going to know what classes they have, if they have their schedule already, sit down with them and say, well, how are you going to organize yourself for history class? You know, you know that teacher, you've had that teacher before. Do they want you to have a binder? You know, how are you going to organize your assignments? And this ties into really working with them on getting them used to planners and agendas. Are you going to use the Google Calendar? You know, are you going to... You, do you want me to buy you a handwritten planner? You know, what works best for you? Um, that being said, even though I do like a lot of the apps, I would discourage re reliability just on technology because we know the technology sometimes goes out or they can't look at it. So I really like to look at that as a strong supplement. So if you can move them in the direction of using a day planner or um, an, or an organizer that you can write in with a pen and pencil, that is usually best in my opinion, but then it's always nice to have that supplement. And I show my students this. I have a big planner that I write everything in, but then I also use the Wonder List, I use the Google Calendar, and I show them that, you know, let's have kind of tiers to our organization here so that if something doesn't work, we have a backup. But this is probably the biggest, is just kind of discuss with them what is your organization going to look like? You know, what things do you think that you need? And then they kind of, you know, go in with an idea. Um, discuss their goals for the year prior to coming on campus. So you might have a student that says, well, I really want to get at least a B average in math this year. That's their biggest goal. So talk with them about it. You know, well, how are you going to achieve that? What steps are you going to take? Um, start talking to them about the roadblocks they might encounter. So why don't you have a B in math now? What makes it hard for you? You know, how can we help you? How can we support you? You know, if you find yourself struggling with an assignment, what is the first step you're going to take to fix that? Um, have that conversation with them. And, and that's going to help them because then if they come into math class and they're struggling with math class, they're going to say, okay, well, I talked to mom, I talked to dad about this, and I'm having a hard time, so I know I can go see Mr. Pavlovic once a week. And I'll talk to him about having a once a week meeting to kind of just check in. And that's the great thing about our school is that we have so many resources with our teachers on campus. So if your student has that plan ahead of time, um, they're not going to get stuck in that rigid transition if they struggle. Help students organize their room at home as practice. Once again, this is hard for teenage boys. But if you're working with them on cleaning their room at home, just show them, you know, there can be a place for everything. You know, this is your workspace. Let's keep this part clean. If this gets a little messy, okay, but this is your workspace. Um, and help them with that so that when they come here and we tell them, your room has to be clean and you have to have this, 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 it's not so much out of their, their, their zone, their normal comfort zone. And, you know, just like anybody, we have some students that are extremely organized and we have some students that struggle with this. So if you kind of just implement that early, it won't be as um, rough when they come here and have to get used to them fairly quickly. We've done in the past as a family, um, but you're more independent now, you've matured, you've grown up, so here's what we like to do to ensure your success. But give him more of the, like have him create it with you. That's probably the biggest um, suggestion I can make is let him take Say, okay, when you are home for the summer, what are some of the things you struggle with? And then you certainly give your feedback as well. But if you compose it together, I would say yes, absolutely. Um, and then maybe even for shorter increments for the first month of summer. And then we'll kind of ease back on it. But if we find that we need it, we'll readjust and collaborate together to finish out the summer. It's really appropriate just moving towards him having a little bit more independence with um, creating it. Thank you. Thank you. We've done in the past as a family, 
um, but you're more independent now, you've matured, you've grown up, so here's what we'd like to do to ensure your success. But give him more of the, like have him create it with you. That's probably the biggest um, suggestion I can make is let him take Say, okay, when you are home for the summer, what are some of the things you struggle with? And then you certainly give your feedback as well. But if you compose it together, I would say yes, absolutely. Um, and then maybe even for shorter increments for the first month of summer. And then we'll kind of ease back on it. But if we find that we need it, we'll readjust and collaborate together to finish out the summer. It's really appropriate, just moving towards him having a little bit more independence with um, creating it. 